my first review of The Crossing, ABC's sci-fi immigration thriller, for lack of a better description, was based on the one episode the network made available for review. Of course, a high-concept, complicated show like The Crossing cannot truly be judged until we've seen how it sustains its story, and its questions-to-answers ratio, beyond the first episode. Too many times, dramas with an elaborate, otherworldly mystery at their center have collapsed under the weight of their own ambition by our two or three, C, flash forward, the event, the family, which often leads to premature cancellation, leaving the viewers who do hang on suffering from closure interruptus. Having watched episode 4 of The Crossing, my status with this show has graduated from, single, to, in an open relationship. I'm not quite ready to introduce The Crossing to my friends, but I do think there's some long-term, season pass potential here. And I'm not alone, an up-and-coming writer, a kid, named Stephen King has taken to Twitter twice to praise the show. First, a quick summary for those who haven't been watching, The Crossing began with hundreds of bodies washing up on a beach in the fictional town of Fort Canaan, Oregon. Only 47 people survived, and they all tell the same story, they're refugees from 180 years in the future, when America becomes an apocalyptic hellscape and humankind is hunted to near extinction by a highly evolved race of people called Apex. As you might imagine, this causes all sorts of headaches, for no-nonsense FBI agent Demi Wren, Sandrine Holt, and scrappy local sheriff Jude Ellis, Steve Zahn. The series premiere raised a lot of questions, many of which I listed in my initial review, what are the Apex exactly? Why do the refugees refer to the coast where they landed as the Long Peace? Is every Apex superhuman evil, or are some, like Reese, Natalie Martinez, who came through the migration with her daughter, trustworthy? What is the deal with shady government official Craig Lindauer, Jay Carnes, who was part of the first migration from the future? Why did Jude leave his job as a cop in Oakland? Four episodes in, we have partial answers to several of these questions. Warning, spoilers follow for the April 23rd episode of The Crossing, The Face of Oblivion. The Apex are, genetically engineered killing machines, determined to take over the planet by wiping out commons, aka regular humans, with a virus called Mantle's disease. Lindauer is part of the First Migration, a group who came here sometime before the 47 refugees, and he seems to be working with a group of commons from the future to stop Apex from ever happening, maybe. As for Jude, he left Oakland because either it's someone he arrested was threatening his family or b, he compromised an investigation by getting too close to a suspect, or c, both. Hey, I said partial answers, more importantly, though, the crossing is briskly moving past its straightforward initial mystery, are the 47 refugees telling the truth? And focusing on a more complex and interesting puzzle, what, exactly, is the first migration trying to change about the future? Tonight's episode ended. With a clever sucker punch, Emma tracks down Paul's Rob Campbell, wife Greta, who not only doesn't corroborate his story that she was part of the first migration, but she also says Paul is the victim of a bizarre cult that claims to be, wait for it, from the future. Just when I was bemoaning the possibility that Lindauer's mass delusion explanation was plausible, Emma spots Lindauer in a family photo on Greta's wall right as Greta emerges from another room and shoots her in the chest. We know The Crossing isn't going to kill off Agent Wren, probably, but the moment raises new questions, like, are the first migration folks bad guys, good guys, or good guys who do bad things for good reasons? While leaving viewers secure in the knowledge that the 47 refugees are almost certainly telling the truth about America's dismal future. After four episodes, I'm invested enough to give The Crossing a shot each week, and if it continues to play at this level, probably the rest of the season. It's a pulpy thriller with an engaging leading man, side note, someone cast Steve Zahn and Kiefer Sutherland in an action comedy, please, and gosh darn it, I want to believe that The Crossing can finish what it started.